I want to talk about the law of vibration a little bit and make some connections on that particular topic, both from uh, a modern perspective and one going back to the days of Gann and Bayer. The first real public um, writing that dealt with this in a meaningful way and put it on the surface was this book, The Law of Vibration, The Revelation of William D. Gann by Tony Plummer. Now, Tony Plummer goes through and he identifies the pattern which was hidden in Gann's Tunnel Through the Air book. It was also hidden in one of the books by George Gurdjieff, uh, The Tales of Beelzebub, and also it's in the New Testament in the book of Matthew, chapter verse 12, 38, 39, 40. So he brings that out from there. We're going to look at uh, the pattern, the way Tony projected it in his book. And we're going to look at uh, two other notable people that are going to bring this together. Uh, George Bayer, who wrote about this book, or who wrote about the law of vibration in his book, The Egg of Columbus, which was one of his last writings. I think it was 1941. And then there's a very f uh, famous modern analyst uh, cycle expert whose name is Martin Armstrong, who uses this particular pattern and one of the cycles in his work. So I'm going to take a look at all of that and make some connections on these people. Here's the pattern as it was described by Tony Plummer and this is the uh, tunnel through the air example. I'm not going to go through how he did this and how that was constructed. If you don't have this book or haven't read it, I strongly recommend that you spend the 20 or $25 to go get it and read this book. He shows the uh, basic pattern here though, and this can be looked at in two ways. It can be looked at as a single pattern of six waves, which is equated to the Jonah story of three days and three nights in the belly of the whale or to Jesus being three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So there it's in the uh, Old Testament and the New Testament. So this is this was built into the Bible also. You can pull this out of the Bible once you know how to read the ancient texts and learn the language of how they talk and relay these things to you but generally you can look at this as a bigger wave one two three up and then a capital letter a b c down and get uh, the six waves you could also look at it as a series of 12 waves by splitting it in half and taking uh, six waves on half the pattern and six waves on the other half of the pattern Looking at it like that would be wave one, two, three, four, five, six, an ABC wave down to about the midpoint, then a one, two, three up, and an ABC down to the end of the pattern. So that gives you the look at the whole pattern. Now, Tony Plummer generally applies this to a longer frame, but uh, we're going to move to Armstrong and Bayer and take a look at their uh, difference in potential application and some of the key things that will tie this together between these three different people and their interpretations. Here's a PDF file of George Bayer's The Egg of Columbus. Uh, this is the copy from the Wheels in the Sky group. Uh, this is also available along with all of uh, George's other writings on the archives.org site on the internet. So you can easily find this and go through it. 
This is the Egg of Columbus or the Hidden Movements in Stock and Commodities Markets by George Bayer, 1942. So in here, I'm just going to make a couple of points. I'm not going to go into detail of explaining this because you can read through this document and make some of these connections. But in uh, right at the very beginning, a key paragraph, which I have boxed in here in blue and yet the entire problem about a feeling of security about the scare of the unknown can be solved with one single word even with one single letter and that is pi in the Greek alphabet 3.14159 this short statement is so huge and tremendous that it cannot possibly penetrate in your mind or anybody else's mind without years of research on the matter of movements be they movements of wheat stocks of people nations or what have you so very interestingly right at the very beginning of the book he makes this comment and then he never mentions the word pi again after that. He does touch on uh, quite a few different things. I'm just going to make a couple of uh, key points, though. In the foreword, he talks about the 20,000 pages of Swedenborg, and then Athenius told the same story in about 3,000 pages. If you divide those two numbers, you get 6.66, which is basically showing you the La ratio in the actives. He does quite a bit in this book mentioning the actives, and he also ties that to Pythagoras and Plato as being the uh, fathers of this type of thinking. And he talks about how they had this all in their memory. Uh, you can see the references. He talks about the seven wonders of the world, which is the law of seven. And uh, I'm not going to go into this deep because this is something that you should probably dig through yourself. But I've got uh, you pointed in the right direction with plenty of clues here. Now I move to the last page of the book. Now George equates this to uh, a dinner, and he brings in. Uh, Dante's banquet and uh, another work similar banquet by Athenius and what he's telling you here right at the very end basically these cycles can overlap so one cycle cannot die till the next cycle begins and he does make a key comment here that uh, is really important when you consider the length of looking for the cycle. He says these patterns repeat all the time. He tells you the best period for buying is during the time the tongue is made and the best time for selling is after the champagne has been served and a nut or two swallowed, which means a gap down. And then he makes one other very important comment right here. Know that a complete cycle from tongue to tongue can run from one to three years. So that's a very big clue right there. So he talked about pi, 3.1414, and then he said a one, the cycles can run to, from one to three years. These cycles can be identified in different lengths. They are wheels within wheels. One complete six-wave pattern, like the 123 capital ABC in the plumber picture, is your six-wave structure with uh, and up in a down wave, which are your three days and three nights. 
So there's an idea and a clue for figuring out what the lengths of these cycles are. Now, there's a little bit on Bear. You can go back and he gives you two dinner uh, examples, two examples in wheat. Uh, it's really important to go through, work out those uh, dinner movements, look at the dates of each segment of the dinner, and then look at the lengths, overall lengths of the two complete dinners and look at them uh, separately and together. Now let's take a look at uh, an, another uh, modern analyst and let's take a look at what he's doing in his structure and that is uh, Martin Armstrong. Now Martin Armstrong, this is a clip article from Armstrong Economics and in here very uh, interesting how Martin has primary cycle is this cycle of pi which is an 8.6 year cycle which is 3141 days which is basically a pi fractal of 3.141 so he's using this as 8.6 years and this was written about in uh, the New Yorker magazine by Nick Palmgarten where he called this the secret cycle. Now Martin also uses this as cycle inside of cycles or wheels within wheels. So Bayer never went beyond the initial mention of pi in the egg book but now Martin Armstrong is clearly using the pi length, the 8.6 year cycle, as the foundation of his work. Here's a screenshot of the wheels within wheels part of this cycle. You can see the uh, eight year cycle. He's broken that down with the wave duration of the smaller waves. He uses a six multiplier to get the larger waves from there. So you've got the 8.6 times six gives you a 51.6 year cycle. This is very close to um, repetitions of other cycles, which I'm not gonna mention right now. And then six times again to get the long cycle, 51.6 times six gets you the 309.6 year cycle. So it's interesting to speculate whether Martin Armstrong had studied uh, the uh, works of Gann and Bayer to come up with this or if he had just come up with it on his own or working with other informational sources. So looking at these different lengths here, the 8.6 year, the 51.6 year, the 309.6 year. In other writings of uh, his, Martin Armstrong does say that these cycles can be expanded and reduced. So I'm going to leave this right here now. I'm not going to, I may get into more depth at some other time and maybe actually bring in some market examples. But for now, uh, if you decide to pursue this, I would look at reducing the 8.6 year cycle down and take Bayer's words and consider uh, cycles something in the length of one to three years like he did and if you want to take this down into the smaller time frame you can take this down even to minutes to find intraday cycles by using the same multiplier of six which by the way you might want to just happen to call that a time factor so with that, that gives you plenty of juice to uh, go out and find some law of vibration
patterns.